For more than 50 years, the Western narrow-body flagships, the Boeing 737 and Airbus A320, became not only the backbone of airline fleets worldwide, but also instruments of geopolitical power, enabling the West to shape supply chains, technology, and even national aviation destinies. But that will soon change. From the East, in the context of sanctions and isolation, a bold challenger has emerged the Irkut NMC-21. More than just another aircraft, it represents an attempt to rewrite the rules of global aviation. Why do some believe it could even outperform the 737 MAX and the A320? How might this aircraft disrupt the established order of the industry? Let's find out. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, Russia's once great aviation industry, Famed for producing legendary aircraft like the Tupolev, Ilyushin, and Yakovlev, fell into decline. Soviet-era passenger fleets became outdated, fuel-hungry, and no longer met international safety and noise standards. Russian airlines were forced to turn to Western aircraft, gradually turning Moscow into a dependent consumer market. Along with that, the dominance of Boeing and Airbus in Aeroflot's fleet, the Russian flag carrier, was seen as a major blemish on the nation's industrial pride. As a result, in 2007, the Moscow government decided to end this dependency with a national project, the Irkut MC-21, officially Magistralny Samolyot 21, Veka. It means the mainline aircraft of the 21st century. Under the leadership of the Yakovlev Design Bureau, part of the Rostec Aviation Corporation, now UAC, the goal was not only to replace the aging Soviet fleet, but to create a narrow-body aircraft capable of matching, or surpassing, its Western rivals in efficiency and passenger comfort. Notably, the ambition of the MC-21 reached a new level after the outbreak of the Russia-Ukraine conflict, when Western sanctions tightened. President Vladimir Putin issued a strategic directive. Produce 1,000 domestically built commercial aircraft by 2030. This was not a business objective, but a national security mandate. The MC-21, together with the upgraded Sukhoi Superjet 100, was identified as a flagship project, receiving the strongest political and financial backing. Among these efforts, the MC-21's mission is clear, to directly challenge the world's best-selling narrow-body segment. Specifically, the MC-21-200 variant, which has a capacity of 132 to 165 seats, was designed as a rival to the Airbus A319neo and Boeing 737 MAX 7, while the MC-21-300 variant, which is 163 to 211 seats, targets the Airbus A320neo and Boeing 737 MAX 9. In this context, failure is not allowed. The aircraft must prove that even under isolation, Russia can sustain and advance a modern aviation industry, serving as both a tool of domestic connectivity and a means to expand influence across non-aligned markets. That means, to break the duopoly of Boeing and Airbus, the MC-21 cannot simply be a cheap copy. It must deliver clear competitive advantages centered on the major breakthroughs, the secret weapon, advanced materials, and the passenger experience. Here's the aircraft's most striking feature, the one that might leave you shocked. Indeed, the most decisive factor in this quest for self-reliance lies in the aircraft's power plant, the indigenous PD-14 jet engine. Developed by Aviat Vigatel, it is the first fully Russian-designed commercial jet engine since the Soviet era. Although the MC-21 was initially conceived with America's advanced Pratt and Whitney engines, sanctions forced a pivot. Today, the PD-14 has become the program's lifeline and a symbol of resilience, ensuring the aircraft can keep flying without relying on Western suppliers. A harsh trade-off between speed, peak efficiency, and absolute independence with a challenge explored later. In many ways, the success of this engine is the single most critical factor for the survival of the entire program. Beyond raw power, 
New material technologies are also this aircraft's greatest point of pride. It made headlines as the world's first narrow body to integrate wings, including the wing box, built with 40% composite materials, manufactured using a proprietary resin transfer molding RTM process. Why does this matter? Composite wings are significantly lighter than traditional metal, reducing empty weight and directly translating into superior fuel efficiency and extended range, two vital factors in commercial aviation. Moreover, lighter materials allow engineers to design slimmer, longer wings with higher aspect ratios, optimizing aerodynamics to reduce drag and boost performance. This is not just a structural breakthrough, but a bold statement of modern aerospace engineering prowess. Finally, the MC-21 seeks to leverage passenger experience as an absolute competitive edge. Its fuselage is notably wider than that of the A320 and 737 with cabin width 4.06 meters versus 3.95 meters on the A320. This extra space enables wider seats even in standard economy layouts, along with an unusually 127 centimeters spacious aisle easing boarding and deplaning while reducing fatigue on long flights. Combined with modern LED lighting and improved air conditioning, the Russian aircraft is positioned not only as a rival in performance, but as a challenger in comfort, directly addressing the long-standing weaknesses of Western narrow bodies. Yet, this reliance on advanced composite technology is a double-edged sword as sanctions have already begun cutting off Russia's access to the carbon fibers and RTM chemicals essential for production. Still, it must be acknowledged that without sanctions, the MC-21 might already have been a formidable competitor on the global market. In contrast, the embargoes have transformed it from a commercial project into a technological survival experiment, where each aircraft rolling out of the factory, a routine matter for Western manufacturers, becomes a major victory for Russia against isolation. The first and most painful barrier was the engine, a forced substitution. The MC-21 was originally designed to use America's advanced Pratt & Whitney PW-1400G engines, a smart choice to ensure optimal performance and smooth international certification. However, once sanctions severed this supply, Moscow was compelled to turn to its domestic solution, the PD-14 turbofan. While this shift symbolized self-reliance, as discussed before, it was a double-edged sword. Though the PD-14 is Aviad Vigatel's pride, it has yet to match Western rivals in fuel efficiency and reliability. More critically, redesigning the aircraft to integrate the new engine caused significant delays in mass production forcing Russia into a harsh trade-off, independence at the cost of speed and optimal performance. The troubles did not stop at engines. They rippled across the entire supply chain, leading to a parts drought and the great aircraft cannibalization crisis. A modern jet requires millions of components, from sophisticated avionics and hydraulic systems to sensors and composite materials. Most were sourced from Western suppliers in the U.S., France, and Germany. After 2022, that supply line was completely cut off, creating severe consequences. The most telling example was Russian airlines resorting to cannibalization, removing parts from grounded Airbus and Boeing aircraft to keep others flying. This is an extremely costly and unsustainable solution raising serious concerns over safety and fleet integrity. To cope, Moscow turned to the gray market and counterfeit parts, relying on intermediaries like Turkey, the UAE, and Tajikistan. This not only drove costs up several fold, but also opened the door to unverified or fake components. Additionally, the greatest challenge is the industrial bottleneck, replacing all Western-made systems in the MC-21 through full-scale Import substitution is a Herculean task, requiring the reconstruction of an entire high-tech supply chain domestically, a process that takes years and costs billions of dollars. In this context, the goal of producing 1,000 aircraft by 2030 is becoming increasingly remote.
But the real battlefield is the certification. For an airliner to be sold globally, it must receive approval from the world's top regulators, primarily the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration and the European Union Aviation Safety Agency. Such certification serves as a seal of safety, reliability, and operability, unlocking access to Western markets and to countries that follow FAA EASA standards. However, after 2022, EASA refused to certify the MC-21, effectively shutting the door permanently to major European markets. This means that no matter how advanced or cost-competitive the aircraft may be, it is confined to Russia and a handful of countries willing to accept Russian domestic certification, Rosaviatsia. Yet even with the West's door closed, this aircraft still has chances in the battles of price and reputation elsewhere. Its cost advantage is clear. Priced at around $91 million, the MC-21-300 is significantly cheaper than the 737 MAX 9, which is around $113 million U.S. million, and the A320neo with around $111 million U.S. million. For airlines in emerging markets, that difference is decisive. Moreover, the jetliner can exploit its rival's scars, particularly Boeing's 737 MAX crisis, which shook confidence in U.S. dominance. With its fresh design, spacious cabin, and modern materials, the MC-21 holds a golden chance to position itself as a credible alternative for regions unwilling to place all their bets on Western suppliers. Finally, the national airline as Trump card provides a safety net. Aeroflot, Russia's largest carrier, has ordered as many as 210 MC-21 out of a total of 339 domestic orders. Backed by heavy state investment and subsidies, the aircraft is set to become the backbone of the national fleet, ensuring demand even without international sales. Russia's vast domestic market is large enough to sustain production and build operational experience, a strategy of strengthening from within while waiting for the geopolitical tides to shift. But this is the question many are wondering. In the context of tightening sanctions, how can the MC-21 find its way to market? Actually, production hurdles and the lack of international certification have reshaped the aircraft's future, shifting its role from a global challenger to more of a regional champion. Russia knows well that conquering the U.S. or European markets is virtually impossible in the near term. Instead, its strategy is to target non-aligned markets, regions where this jetliner's use of non-Western components becomes a political advantage. Countries like India and Vietnam, while expanding cooperation with the West, still seek to diversify suppliers in order to strengthen bargaining power and reduce geopolitical risks. Similarly, Many nations in the Middle East and Africa, with historical ties to Russia, are looking for aviation solutions not bound by Western political conditions. Yet, in Moscow's push to reaffirm its industrial strength, the MC-21's toughest rival may not be Boeing or Airbus at all, but China's Comac C-919. Though the C-919 still depends heavily on Western engines and systems, China's vast financial resources and domestic market give it a powerful edge. Competition between the MC-21 and the C-919 in non-Western markets could spark a fierce new rivalry between two powers eager to assert their place. Besides, there is talk within Russia of a potential variant, the MC-21-400, which is around 260 seats with a longer range. If realized, it could enter the small widebody category, competing with the Airbus A330neo and the Boeing 787. This remains a distant dream, but it signals Moscow's ambition not just to defend its home turf, but to eventually reshape the balance of global aviation power. The MC-21 stands as clear proof of Russia's grand ambition to reclaim its status as an industrial superpower and challenge the Western-dominated order of global aviation. It boasts a modern design, advanced composite technology, and undeniable cost advantages.
Over $10 billion have been invested, and hundreds of units have already been ordered by Russian airlines. Yet, the aircraft is also a tragic tale of potential trapped by geopolitics. Barriers in fully domesticating production, supply chain shortages, and, most critically, the refusal of international certification have confined the aircraft to a regional project. Its future depends not only on whether Russian engineers can overcome technological challenges, but also on shifts in the global political landscape. Will the MC-21 become a symbol of self-reliance and a true game-changer in international aviation? Does it have any chance to challenge the giants Boeing and Airbus beyond Russia's borders? What do you think? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe for more of our in-depth aviation analyses. Thanks for watching and see you next time.